kids, welcome to church and thank you for joining us today. May I request everyone to please stand up. Raise your hands like this and say this prayer with me. God, we welcome your presence today. Have your way in us. You may be seated. Who knows why we go to school? Why do we study all those books that they give us? To get a good job and to learn what we need to know. When you come to church, we also study a book. What book do we study? The Bible. Who knows why we study the Bible? The Bible is even more important than our school books because it tells us about God and Jesus. And speaking of God's Word, let us check our Bible verse. Hi kids! It's time to say our memory verse. Our verse is found in John chapter 5, verse 39b. It says, These are the very scriptures that testify about me. John chapter 5, verse 39b. How about let us all stand together and say the verse with me. Are you ready? Repeat this after me. John chapter 5, verse 39b. These are the very scriptures that testify about me. John chapter 5, verse 39b. Great job, kids! Now, let's do it one more time. This time, can we do it much louder and better? Can we? Great. Are you ready? Let's go. John chapter 5, verse 39b. These are the very scriptures that testify about me. John chapter 5, verse 39b. That was so good, kids! Now, you may have a seat. Since we are learning about the Bible, we are going to do a Books of the Bible Memory Challenge. The Bible is a total of 66 books. We are going to memorize a few Bible books at a time until we get to do the rest. How's that? Okay, let's start from Genesis to 2 Chronicles. We got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, and 1st and 2nd Chronicles. This time, will you repeat after me? Okay, let's do it! Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. Let's do it one last time. Say these Bible books with me. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. Good job, kids! We encourage you to do this exercise this week. And get ready for the next group of books we are memorizing next time. The Bible is also known as the Word of God. Do you believe the Bible? Why? 
Has anyone ever told you that they don't believe the Bible? Many people unfortunately think that the Bible is just another long, boring book. But of course, the Bible is not just another book. It was given to man from God to reveal Jesus Christ as our Savior. We will learn more about it during our Bible time. But before we go there, we want to declare God's Word over our lives to remind us of how God thinks of us. The Bible is God's Word and God's Word is powerful. Let us declare it in 3, 2, 1, go!
building tonight, right? No guilt, no shame, no sin, no stain is greater than the great I am. No fear, no grave, no other name is greater than the great I am. It's Bible time. The Bible is also known as the Word of God. Do you believe the Bible? Why? Has anyone ever told you that they don't believe the Bible? Many people, unfortunately, think that the Bible is just another long, boring book. But of course, the Bible is not just another book. It was given to man from God to reveal Jesus as our Savior. From Genesis, the very first book, to Revelation, the very last book, the purpose of the Bible is Jesus. In John chapter 5, verse 39, Jesus himself says, These are the scriptures that testify about me. But what can we say to people who just don't believe that the Bible is the Word of God? Let's look up some scriptures that help us understand the significance and the truth about the Bible. Let's read 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. All scripture comes from God. The scripture is good for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training, and equipping. What does it mean for the Bible to be god bred It basically means that comes from God. When the people were writing the Bible, God was talking to them and helping them know what to write. Now let's check Psalm chapter 12 verse 6. And the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. The Bible is flawless. It does not contain any mistakes. It is pure gold or silver, meaning without any impurities. Let's go to Psalm chapter 119, verse 160. All your words are true. All your righteous laws are eternal. When people say they don't believe in the Bible, how would you respond to them? We say, all God's words are true, so the Bible is also true because this is the Word of God. God 
does not ever need to come up with new rules or laws. His laws are eternal. Let's look at the last passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. The Holy Spirit reveals the Bible to us. But why is it difficult for some people to understand the Bible? It is because they do not have the Holy Spirit to guide them. The Bible tells us about God and Jesus. It tells us about how God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit love us and all the things that they have done for us. And it tells us not how we can get a good job, but how we can be saved and go to heaven when we die. It tells us how we are supposed to live our lives now. It tells us what kind of people He wants us to be and what kind of things He wants us to do. Those are pretty important things, aren't they? That's why we study the Bible to learn all those things. Who can tell me who wrote this book? It is written by Keith Faulkner. Who can tell me who wrote this book? More than 40 people wrote the Bible. People like Moses, King David, Peter, and Paul. It is a collection of books. A big book made up of a lot of smaller books. There are 66 books in the Bible, but those 40 people weren't just making up the Bible from their own ideas, were they? They weren't just making up a story like this fiction book, right? Let's look up 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 to 21. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its own origin in the human will, but prophets through human spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. It says here that the Scripture comes from the will of God. The Holy Spirit inspired and carried men to write the Bible. This verse tells us that people wrote the Bible, but that God and the Holy Spirit was giving people the ideas for what to write. Wow! We have learned so many great things about the Bible. Let's pray together now. Dear God, thank you for our Bibles. We have learned so many things about your word today. Help us to discover more about it and help us to live our lives according to your words. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. We know with certainty that the Bible is inspired by the Word of God. The prophet Isaiah said that the earth was round in the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 22, long before man believed it to be true. Man thought that the world was flat and not too long ago, a young shepherd boy found scrolls that were over 2,000 years old. What was written on the scrolls was almost exactly like what we find today in the book of Isaiah. Moreover, numerous archaeological discoveries are proving that from a historical perspective, the Bible is accurate. But the Bible is more than just facts and history. The Bible brings us to a saving faith in God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And we know that this is true because the Holy Spirit makes us feel good about it. 
Let us pray. Father God, thank you for giving your word to be a constant comfort and guide to me every day of my life. Your word is the absolute truth. It teaches me your will. It holds all the answers I need. Lord Jesus, help me keep your word close to me, close to my heart, so I will never stray. Amen. Come back next week for another great time of worship together. Have a great week, everyone, and we will see you next time.